call me Mr. Cynical because I've been called Mr. Cynical many, many times. But uh, be honest. If the Mets were in first place right now on their way to another 100-win season, you think that they would announce this today? I do. See, I disagree. I think this is Steve Cohen. I mean, I was reading the thing, you know, before he came in, they had four retired numbers. This will be uh, eight and nine. I think he's doing what Met fans have wanted. Did they announce any retired numbers last year when they were on their way to winning a division before they choked it? I do not remember. They did not. But they haven't even, there's no dates. It's next year. I know, but this is what they did with Keith. So after that miserable season they had where the thumbs down and the Javi Baez and all that disaster, they announced after the season they were going to retire Keith. And then the year after, you know, everybody's all wrapped up in the trumpets and in winning divisions. And then they didn't win the division and go into the playoffs and not a single number is retired. Now, this year, they have one of the most embarrassing years in their history. And now they're going to retire two guys next year. So they get some positive pub at the end of the year. It's like, look at the shiny object over here as the whole entire building is burning down over here. And that's just the way I feel like I don't think if they were if they were battling the Braves in this past series. And we're both you know, first and second place like they were last year. I, I don't think this would have happened. I think everybody would have been so focused on what was happening with the current state of the Mets as opposed to people in marketing going, you know, this would be a perfect time to get a little feel good feeling around this organization and retire these two numbers. And I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think the reason why I like the Keith retirement number was because he's been so involved twofold. Obviously, 86 meant who was a leader, won a championship. And then for, what is it? We're talking almost Two decades. Tw- yeah, 20 years now. It was 2006 that they started with SNY, and he'd been a part of stuff prior to that too. And we're talking two decades as a part of the broadcast team. He just means so much to the Met fan. But I, I don't get, like, the Daryl Strawberry and Doc Gooden thing, as great as they were in their primes, they're not legendary players for their entirety of their Mets career because it ended in such horrible ways in Mets uniforms for both of them. And should have been better. And they should have been better. I agree. But it's still Doc and Daryl. And I think, I think, I mean, I hope, I hope Met fans call, tell me I'm wrong. I think most Met fans have wanted this. No, I know. I know they have, but for me, it doesn't, I, I just, you can have, you can be in the Mets hall of fame and you could be a guy who's at the top of mind when you're talking about Mets history without getting your number retired. And I, and there's just a few really special players that I think get their numbers retired. And, and I, I don't, I don't think doc and Daryl are, are, are those guys. Okay. Plus, I mean, I do, but I mean, that's I mean, fine. And neither one of them are hall of famers. You know, I mean, like you're talking about they're Met hall of famers, right? Yeah, They're Met hall of famers. Mm-hmm. Well, I, hey, listen, if that's your criteria, then they shouldn't be well, they that, have but, their number retired. Right, but Keith's not in the Hall of Fame either. But I do think that it's it's a little bit different because of the, the broadcasting stuff. But, I mean, if you think about, if you you say Doc Gooden, Mets, mm-hmm. is it the first thing that comes to mind the 1985 season or is it some of the issues that he had and the fact that his oh, career... I think both. I, I absolutely think both, the way the career derailed. But I also think about those days in the summer when it was talking to your friends about you know, Doc's pitching tonight. You got to watch. It was must see. I mean, yeah. and, and I go back to those that, those mid 80s and it was unbelievable just thinking, oh, Doc's pitching tonight. They're winning. How many strikeouts tonight? Yeah, of course. And that that was his, you know, he took the country by storm. It yeah. wasn't even just the, the Mets. It was the entire baseball world. And Daryl Strawberry, I mean, he played, what was it, seven seasons with the Mets? Eight. And then was it eight? Eight, I guess it was 83 83 eight to, to 90. 90. Okay, so eight so mm-hmm. eight seasons. And should have been better. And he's, you know, as you know, he's one of my favorite players I've ever watched. Yeah. As many issues as he had. I mean, <laughs> I used to, I'm not even joking. I used to look in the USA Today for the St. Paul Saints box scores. Really? And he was, yes. Wow. And he was there for that one summer. Um, yeah, I was, for whatever reason, he was the lightning rod player for me. You know, when he was up, I had to stop what I was doing. I don't know why he, he, he had that, um, effect on me, but I loved watching him. He was the, he was the player when the, the Dodgers came to Shea first time in a Dodger uniform, me and my buddy, Mike Mullaney tickets, car go. We had to be there. And I missed his first stupid at bat because of parking issues getting in. But oh, wow. like, that's yeah. I mean, I, I love the guy when he was with the giants for a very brief time, I would listen to to 
No joke. A radio out the window so I could get the Philly station when the Dodgers were playing. The That's Phillies, crazy. Playing the Phillies. Yeah, I, I mean, I knew guy. you loved them. I, I didn't did. know it was that nuts. Yeah, I really did. Into my teens and early 20s. And so I totally understand where you're going. I disagree. But um, I'm actually happy that these two are going in. Yeah, I mean, I'm not that I'm not happy about it. I'm sure I'm happy for them. And they're and Daryl's overcome a lot of stuff and Doc's overcome a lot of stuff. And I, I just I hope Doc has overcome. A lot I don't of know. Stuff. I just I, I it, it was not one of those things when Steve Cohen took over the organization. Like I know it was for I've heard Joe Beningo talk about this and other Met fans like that's something that needed to be corrected. I never I never felt that way about those guys. I mean, it was, it just, it felt like there should have been more there. And you're right. And, and, the, and they both ended up being Yankees afterwards and winning and just, world series yes. and throwing no hitters. I, I just, I don't know. I, everything changed. Like y- y- the way you felt about those guys in their prime or even, you know, when, when Daryl wins rookie of the year and, and doc wins at Cy Young and they obviously in 1986, the way you felt about them then, it was like these guys will have their numbers retired. But then the way you felt about them in the late 90s. Sure, oh yeah. You weren't even thinking about 98, it. 98, absolutely. And here's another thing. I think that the Mets' futility through the years, since those guys were no longer in Met uniforms, drove this. Well, of course. I mean, 86 drives it. They yeah. haven't won since. But don't you think that if you're going to get your number retired, it has to be a timeless thing and not circumstantial? I mean, like to me, well, like because like if this if this team had won more championships throughout the years or had even been better, but it's not these, circumstantial. Those guys it's would fact. be yeah, but but those guys wouldn't be looked at as special. Okay, I mean, if Aaron Judge goes on to hit 60 home runs every year for the next five years, then Maris isn't looked at as special. Well, that's but that's different as far as you know. You're, that's a huge error gap. You no, know no, what no, I'm I, saying? I understand, like, like huge. But I think I think to your point, the fact that the Mets haven't won illustrates how special those mid 80s were, and the fact that that was a team that yes, they should have won two or three, let alone the one, but they got the one, and you've seen now it's 2023. How difficult it's been to win it since they had they had uh, 2000 with the Yankees the 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 Subway Series they had 2015 and a whole hell of a lot of nothing in between that you had the collapse in in was it 07 the seven and 17 mm-hmm. I mean you had listen Wright and Reyes you would have thought and I think David Wright will probably be the next guy I think and I could be wrong about that but um, there's not a lot of guys that won here and were drafted here. And yes, should have won more and probably should have played here longer. It's a very small field you're picking from. So you want to call it circumstantial, that's fine. I'll call it a fact. There are teams that have never won a World Series. There are teams that don't go to the playoffs. We're talking about Otani and, and Trout. You know, this is the two guys been together for five years. They've never sniffed the playoffs together. Yeah, but there's also, I mean, there, there's, in, in, with baseball, it's it's very individual as well. I mean, there are guys like 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 Mike Piazza represented an era of that team that I, I, I thought for sure, like there was no doubt in my mind that that guy had to get his number retired. It just was, I mean, he did absolutely everything you wanted for f- from his tenure as a Met. I mean, he gave you every bit of it. Sure. Until he tore the 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 groin off his bone that, that, you know, and ended up, that was really the end of him. But I just, I don't know. I just, I know, I know how special they are in Mets history. I, one of my like coolest moments I ever had is when I was producing for Joe and Evan, I got to do those Buffalo wild wings shows. Oh, it was yeah, a promotion yeah. and the guest was doc Gooden. It was the coolest thing. I have a poster of mm-hmm. me and him on it and, and it's signed. And it was just because back then, you know, those guys were as uh, bigger than life for someone that was my age at the time, and I was even too young to really understand 86, but also, you know, the first, like, sports business memory, like, the first time that I ever had my stomach turn because of sports business was when Dow Strawberry left. I remember that. Oh, I remember, too. I was sick to my stomach as well. I remember that, going, like, what? The money and this? And don't you want to be a Met? And what the hell? The I press don't understand. conference in L.A. was crushing. Right. Like, I don't, I just don't understand this. Um, so I, ju- I just have a different the, – the, the legacy that was left by those guys to me didn't warrant – like it wasn't a lock to me that their numbers were going to be retired. And let me ask you this. Jacob DeGrom's number going to get retired? Because it should. That's a very good question. Now the Doc's My number is retired. would be yes in years to – yes. I would it's going to have to be. So. Yeah. I mean, if, you're, if, you have, if you have Doc's number retired, you got to have DeGrom's number I retired. I think that's very possible. 
Okay. I mean, if someone told me no in that answer, then I would, I would, I would have to fight them on it. Yeah, no, no. I, I but, think it's possible. And you could, like, as you have, you can fight back against Doc and Daryl too. There is a lot of examples of these guys not being the best guys in the world and underachieving on the field because of their actions off the field. I, I can't argue any of that. That's a hundred percent fact as well. Yeah. Um, I, but to me, it's it's really one of the best periods in Mets oh, in, it is. in the Mets history, and they were at the forefront of it. But does it need to be validated with a number retirement? I guess it doesn't it need really, to be. But yeah. I have no issue that but they I, did it. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it could just there's just a lot of people I think leading into this thing that this has to happen. This has to happen. You know, this should have been I even heard Peter Schwartz, this should have been done years ago. Really? Did it need to be? I mean, does now the 86 World Series feel more special to well, you? Because, as every year passes, it, <laughs> yes. Because the, but not, not because the guy's numbers got retired. No, but as years go by and you don't win and you don't win, you realize, holy crap, it's hard to win. Yeah. And they've done it one time, once. I mean, I'm not I'm 69, of course, but I'm just saying you, in the last 40 years, they've done it once. Yeah, I you know, it, it kind of reminds me, too, in the years that I spent in Pittsburgh where they got farther and farther away from their good teams. Mm-hmm. And it was like enough of celebrating this stuff. It's, we've had it now. Yeah, but you know you what I'm saying? Like something else to celebrate. Right. But it's like the I remember they say like Bill Mazeroski. Can we give it up? Already? <laughs> like It was 1960. Yeah, sure. Like, can we do something? And then obviously, you know, that 71 and the we are family pirates. that had that stuff and they had the 90s. But everybody, no one looked back at that, that uh, NLCS with the uh, against the Braves and Sid Bream. Nobody mm-hmm. really remembered that positively, but they would just always, you know, it's like enough with the with the past already. And now the Mets have been to a couple World Series since. One was one of the worst experiences I've ever had watching the Mets lose to the Yankees. And, and I was in the building watching the Yankees celebrate at Shea. You know, the other one, I didn't really expect them to win in 2015. But it's like, uh, it's it's how funny. much how much more juice can we squeeze out of 1986? Oh, they're going to keep squeezing. <laughs> it's funny you, you mentioned that about 2000 and the, two, and the 2015 team because... The two th- you almost forget that they went to the World Series in 2000 because of who it was against and the fact that you lost and the fact that you lost on your home field and they got to celebrate with Eddie Scazzeri in the dugout watching and being sick to his stomach. Yeah. As opposed to 2015, that that run that no one expected and all of a sudden, yeah, the Royals beat them, but they gave you something that was kind of like out of left field. And it's almost you almost look at 2015 as better than 2000 because you want to forget 2000. Yeah, and I had some amazing moments and amazing memories in that 2000 season. Yeah, I sure. went to a ton of games that year. I mean, a regular season game was June 30th, 2000. It was fireworks night, and the Mets came back and had that eight-run eighth inning um, where they were down 10 – or maybe it was a, no, it was a 10-run eighth inning. They were down 10 to 2 and then ended up taking a 12-10 lead. And Argaro Alfonso had the hit down the third base line to tie it. Piazza hit the home run to take the lead. And the place was going crazy, and they blew off fireworks. It was Grucci fireworks, one of the coolest nights ever. The Benny Agbayani 10th inning home run against the Giants in the NLDS that year. Uh, the Bobby Jones one hitter uh, after that. Like all those things. I loved all those moments I can remember. And even when I hear now today that who lets the dog, who let the dogs out song, I'm like, yes. Like it reminds me <laughs> yeah. of that great moment. But then it ends. Ended with getting Horribly. punched in the face yeah. by Mike Tyson. I mean, that's what sucks about it. So, and I, you even had what was it was a Piazza that hit the shot right to Bernie that yeah, off yeah. the bat, right? You game thought five, was out. Yeah. yeah, game five. I actually, I, I did. I'm watching on TV. On TV, yes. yes. And when I went back and saw it when I got home, I 100 percent agree. But I went to so many games in those same seats that year. It was right to the left of home plate in the mezzanine box. And what I would do. Because right off the bat, you don't really know, is I would go right to the outfielder. Mm-hmm. To see where he's going, running to? Yeah. And when I saw that, I was just like, nah. He was just drifting. Not going to happen. Yeah, I'm telling you, off the bat. I mean, I've seen that replay a million times. And it's still, especially the way that long, lumbering swing he had. Well, how many home runs did you see that yeah. Piazza hit that looked just, just like, like that like on, on TV? <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Oh, man. Here we go, dredging up all the memories. (laughs) Yeah. Dredging them all up this morning on this feel-good summer Friday. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.